Hello, it's Patrick here from thegaragebandguide.com. Beginners, this video is for you. Getting started with GarageBand on Mac can be a daunting task for newcomers. So in this video, I'm going to share my top five tips to help you hit the ground running. When you open GarageBand on Mac, the program will automatically open to the last project that you worked on. To start a new project, hit File in the toolbar at the top and select New from the menu. If it's your first time using GarageBand, you'll be taken to the Project Template window by default. With the New Project tab selected, you'll be able to choose from the eight project templates available to you. Now, these templates open a new GarageBand project with a variety of track types, instruments and effects preloaded, which allows you to quickly and easily get to work on a particular genre or type of project. The Songwriter template, for example, loads up a mix of audio tracks, software instrument tracks and a drummer track set up for what a typical singer-songwriter might need while the electronic template loads up an electronic flavoured drummer track with a big selection of EDM synths from GarageBand's sound library. If you want to start your project from scratch, however, you're better off selecting Empty Project. Doing so will open GarageBand with nothing preloaded and you'll be prompted to select a track type to add. There are three track types available to you in GarageBand. The Software Instrument track, which allows you to play and record the huge number of virtual instruments and sounds that come packaged with GarageBand, either with a MIDI controller or even with your Mac's keyboard. There are two subtypes of audio track. The Real Instrument track lets you record vocals or an instrument through the built-in microphone on your Mac or via an attached external microphone. The guitar track gives you access to GarageBand's suite of electric and bass guitar amp sims. And finally, the drummer track, which adds a virtual session drummer to your project. You can choose from 31 different drummers, which cover genres from dubstep to hip hop to hard rock. Whatever you plan to create in GarageBand, you're probably going to want to include one of these guys in your mix. GarageBand has a huge library of pre-recorded snippets of audio that you can use in your projects called Loops. There's a built-in loop browser that you can use to search for your loops using filters like genre type, instruments, and even the key that the loop is in. Click on the loop icon in the top right of the GarageBand window to open the loop browser. You can then use the filters up top to find a specific loop type that you're after, or click on the beats, tempo, or key headings to sort them that way. Click on a loop to audition it and then drag and drop it into the workspace to add it to your project. The three different loop types on offer here correspond to the three track types available in GarageBand. Blue loops are clips of recorded audio. Green loops open in a software instrument track. 
and Yellow Loops open in a drummer track. The very first time you open GarageBand on Mac, you'll probably notice that a lot of the sounds that you want to work with are greyed out. This is because when you first download GarageBand from the Mac App Store, all you get is the bare bones of the program. You'll need to download the rest of its sound library separately. Now, you can start the download by clicking any of the greyed out items that you see in the Loop Browser, for example, or by clicking on GarageBand in the toolbar at the top of the GarageBand window, hovering over Sound Library and selecting Download All Available Sounds. Be warned, depending on your internet connection, this will take a long time. So maybe set this up before going to bed or before going to work or something. If you're ready to start using GarageBand's huge library of software instruments, but either haven't gotten round to buying yourself a MIDI controller yet, or just don't have one to hand, you can actually use your Mac's keyboard. Click on Window in the toolbar at the top of the GarageBand window and select Show Musical Typing. On the keyboard that pops up, the middle keys correspond to the white keys on a piano, and the W, E, T, Y, U, O and P keys correspond to the black keys. You've only got a single octave to play with here, but it's definitely usable and lets you jump into GarageBand's huge sound library right away. So there you have it, that's my top five tips to help you get started with GarageBand on Mac. If you like this video, then hit the like button. I really do appreciate it. And it lets me know that you want to see more videos just like this one. If you haven't subscribed already, then now is a great time to do so. And don't forget to hit the notification bell there to make sure that you don't miss a thing. I've been Patrick from thegaragebandguide.com and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.